Well, we'll continue with the next lesson. Um, happy you're all still awake. It's very dark in here. Um, my name is Marcus. I'm also with Derivative. And we'll be looking at a little bit uh, subs and shading now and a little rendering network. え、トピックはえっ and I'll just show you the final, um, oh, one second. I will just show you the final output of this little class today. So you know what we're doing, yeah. Dun, dun, dun. I should fix that here. So yeah, this will be our final output here. Um, a sphere and some noise and then rendering and a little effect to the end. So yep, that's pretty much um, for the next hour or so we'll be looking at how to create this. So let's get started here. I just gonna start a new touch designer. So everybody open up a new touch designer. All right, and the first thing I usually do is I'll close the palette because we don't need it, so we have a little bit more room. And then we can remove all of these operators by right clicking and window selecting. Or you could also optionally, you could also hit Control A, or on a Mac that would be a Command, I guess. I'm not sure, yeah. Control A ka Mac da to Command A ne tenbu senpai to tsuyo ga deki ni sore demo daijoube So let's start with um, actually placing down a component and what we'll put down is a container component. So hit tap and go to the component family and then select a container. De e to tab wo and we'll rename this to something like sphere noise. And now we can go inside this container and we can go inside by zooming into it with your middle mouse wheel or you can double click onto it or hit enter. But yeah. And you can follow where we are by always paying attention to this um, address here. So now we are in sphere one, uh, uh, project one and spear noise, the container we just created. And now let's hit tap again 
and keep hitting tab until you are at the sub family. So you can switch through these families by hitting tab. And we'll have a look at these subs here, and they work the same way as um, any other family. The darker colored operators are called, they're of the generator type, they create geometry, while the lighter colored ones are filters, so they um, change geometry. えっと、色が濃い、ちょっと沈み込んでる方はジェネレーターっていうものでそれ自体が何かを作るっていうものです。色が薄い方はフィルターっていう形で何か作ったジオメトリーなどをつなげてあのつなげることで機能するオペレー
And the other thing that I want to do, and while I'm in here, I'll just change that right away because we're going to use it. You can change the primitive type of this sphere. So currently it's a mesh, and we'll switch it to a polygon. And you can see that very nicely in this wireframe mode. While the shaded model, well, it's got a couple more corners, edges, but uh, the difference really is apparent in the wireframe mode. But I'll put it into shaded again and uh, disable the viewer. And now right click on the output of the sphere and append a noise. Okay. And you can see the noise by default already animates. It's deforming the sphere. And you can control this deformation with all the parameters that are available here. So for example, dragging exponent down to zero creates this very, uh, well, almost dramatic animation. Similar also the period and things. Um, yeah, basically all these parameters to uh, uh, have an effect on how the noise is deforming the sphere. And let's have a look why it's already animating. This is something unusual in touch designer. Usually um, operators don't automatically animate. But if you go to the transform page on the parameters, you can see that the translate per, um, that one of the translate parameters here actually has a little blue field in it. And if you want to see how this number is being created, you can click on the name. You will see the three parameters for translate, tx, ty, tz. And in tz, you see that there is a Python expression in there. And we can change that here by, for example, multiplying this by 0 0.5 to slow it a little bit down. Okay, so we have, we kind of have our basic setup here. We have some geometry and we need to render this. And the rendering process perhaps is about um, taking 3D information and converting it to color. So you could imagine that this sphere here, how it's being um, how it's being defined is a lot of coordinates, 3D coordinates in space, and we'll try to move this into uh, um, color values. That's essentially what it is. Yeah. 
サイズを持ってますが、まあ、これをカメラで撮ってレンダリングして 2D の画像に落とし込んでいきます。And the necessary components to do this would be、um, all in the component family here. So open up the upgrade dialog with tap and go to the component family. And then in the first column, it says 3D objects above. You have things like lights, cameras, geometry. So let's pick this. We'll take a camera. And hit tap again and find a light. And hit tap again and find a geometry. And、um, for now, the next piece we need is the operator that converts this into an image. Which is a render top. So go to the top family and find the render. And it renders a donut. We can kind of see that this is really a donut by just、uh, rotating. If you select the geometry and change the rotate around the x axis by 40 to 45 or something like this, you see that it's actually a donut. Now, this is all nice that we have this, but I don't really want to render a donut. I want to render my sphere. And therefore, I somehow have to get this stuff into here, into the geo. So let's copy these two operators here. So, right click, select, and、uh, copy them. And then go into Geo1 by zooming in or double clicking. And paste them. So、um, now I cannot see really what's happening on the outside, and I really would like to do that. So I'm going to split my panes. And you can do that by clicking on this arrow here, which is pane options, and then choose split left and right. So now, in both of these panes, they're independent from each other, showing the same thing right now, but I can. Navigate between these networks here by just clicking onto、uh, the path where I want to go. So I want to go to sphere noise, so I'm just going to click on it. And what I can see now is that despite me having the sphere and the noise in the same network in the Geo1, it's still not rendering. It's also not displaying here.
And this is due to two flags that we have to set, the render flag and the display flag. So if I turn on the render flag and the display flag on the, uh, um, on the noise, now it actually appears in my renderer. And I can delete the donut here, the torus, to just clean that up. But in general, I find this rather complicated. This is like you have to work in different networks. So I'll just show you a shortcut. I'll remove this geo one again, and I'll close this pane. And now what I'll do is I'll right click on the output of the noise and I'm not gonna add a sub here, but what I'll do, I'll go to the component family and pick geometry. So what happened here? Oh yeah. Um, you can um, right click on the output of the noise. And then instead of choosing the noise, I'll go to the component family, find the geometry component in the first column. Did that work? Yeah. And so what happened here, if we go inside this geometry just to see what happened, because normally these, these operators don't connect, like you cannot connect different families with each other. But inside this geo one component, um, by creating it the way we did, it actually plays the in and an out sub. And the in sub is the one that then created the connector on the geo component that lets me connect the sub. And then it also already set up the render and the display flag, so I don't have to worry about that. And you can see there's also an out operator now, or an out connector. Does everybody have it this far? Everybody have this set up? Yeah. Looks good. Okay. So this is the basic principle that you would repeat over and over again when you're trying to render geometry. It's always you need a camera, you need a light, you need the geometry and the render top as um, yeah, as the final. 
価値で 3D をレンダリングするために必要なあの原則でこの形はこれから何度も何度も出てくるやり方です。Perhaps another thing that would be nice to have here is a material. And the material is for shading the geometry. So let's create one. We'll open up the upgrade dialog. And all the materials are under the mat section here. And for now, just let's pick a fong, the fong mat. Now we somehow have to tell the、uh, geo which material to use for rendering. So I'm going to select the geo and hit P for parameters. And on the render page of this geometry component, there's a material parameter. And that's where we can take this mat and drop it onto the material parameter. And now, what we can do here in the material, if you select it, you have control over different colors. So I could、um, yeah, have control over how the light reacts on the object. Yeah, that's just basic, very basic lighting or、uh, shading. And these materials also accept color maps and norm bump maps, etc. And maybe it's a good idea for us to add a color map here. If you change the colors like I did randomly, you can always get back to the defaults that were there before by right clicking onto the parameter and choosing Reset Parameter. So, a color map that we can add here can be just a default top. Like a movie file or an image or something. So let's add a movie file in top. Bring a movie file in and we get our、uh, banana. But we can also, by hitting on this little plus here on the file parameter, we can browse for a different、uh, image. And just for showing how that works, I'll choose the checker map, the box map. And now select the phone so you have the parameters up and drag the movie file in. Onto the color map. And yeah, you have a simple shaded,、um, simple shaded sphere now that's being deformed. So let's try to make this now, or actually, everybody have that? <coughs> oh. And let me know if you have questions or.
大体基本的なことは分かる全く 3DCG 分かんないよっていう方ってどれぐらいいらっしゃいますかレンダリングって何ですかみたいななるほど多分今あのレンダリングが何ですかとかそういう話が多分すっ飛ばして他のソフトでやってることをタッチでやるとこうなりますっていうような話にいっちゃっているのでなかなか分かりづらいと思うんですが、えっと、3DCG は基本的にモデルってあのグラフコンピューター上にモデルがあるのでそれをあの最終的に映像とかにするには 2D の画像として書き出さなきゃいけないのであの空間仮想の空間上に。あのカメラを置いてライトを置いてそのカメラから見たらどうなるかっていうのを、えー、書き出すことをレンダリング、えー、普通はあの 3D ソフトだったら分かりやすくカメラをこうプラカードロケで配置したりあのライトを自分で太陽を持ってきたりとかやるんですがタッチはこの加工つないでいくのでちょっと特殊なやり方になっていますで特にジオメトリっていう箱の考え方は他のソフトには多分上がりなくてでなんでこれ作るんですかっていうのは割とおまじないなんですけどあのスタジオだと理解してもらうのが多分一番分かりやすいですあのカメラがあってライトがあってそのレンダリングする対象が入っているあのスタジオみたいなその中に入っているものじゃないとレンダリングができませんなんとなくそういうものです But, um, it's perhaps good to also to look, before we continue, it's perhaps also good to look at the parameters of the render top itself. Because when I placed it down, everything connected automatically. We didn't have to do anything. And the reason for that is that The default parameter in the default value for the camera parameter is cam1, and we placed a camera that was named automatically cam1. デフォルトで作ると勝手に名前がカメラ1になっているのでカム1になっているのでそれが勝手に結びついているということですね逆にあの名前を変えちゃうと結びつかなくなります And geometry and lights have these stars as the value which means they pick up any geometry type or any geometry component and any light component で次にレンダーではジオメトリとライトはあの星マークアスタリスクが入っているんですがこれはあの同じ階層にあるすべてのライトとジオメトリを対象にするという書き方です。特定のものだけをレザリングしたかったら、ここに直接名前を打ち込んであげればいいです。Now you don't have to follow me here. I just show you、um, basically what that means when you change these parameters. So I'll... Yeah. でちょっとあのマーカスさんがその。So, if I take this geometry here and copy paste it, it's automatically picked up by the render as well. But perhaps that's not what I want. Maybe I just want to actually see in this render the Geo1 or the Geo2. And that's when I can fill it out here. Now, this renderer is only looking at Geo2, so any other geometry I add, it's not, it doesn't,、uh, doesn't have any impact on it. But I'll change this back to star for me so we have all the same and delete those two geometries.
to the default basically and now continue with a couple more subs here. So as we said, we have quite a bit of, I guess you already explored tops and uh, chops. Um, so on SOPs we have quite a bit of different uh, filters as well that are similar to uh, uh, tops, for example. There's, um, sorry, oh yeah, okay. Um, a lot of these SOPs might, uh, might seem familiar from tops. It's the same functionality in a way, just for 3D space. Like there's transform subs to move geometry around, or text subs to render t or to uh, uh, create text geometry, uh, switch subs to switch between different inputs. Sorry? What is the first example? Uh, transform? Transform is a way to the top of the screen. The text is a way to get the text and the text is a way to get the text. The text is a way to get the text and the text is a way to get the text. The text is a way to get the text and the text is a way to get the text. Um, and also you have um, all the generators which can be used for um, bringing in models from, um, from file, like there's an alembic, um, an alembic operator here. Is that actually in there? Alembic, yeah. It's already in there, right? Yeah. yeah. Or the file insop. The file insop or alembic um, I just going to check if we actually have a model in here. Media, Geo, Dodeca, J. Right, so you can drag different types of geometry files, for example, into um, you don't have to do that um, into Touch Designer and it basically creates the SOPs or if it's an FBX file, it's going to create the whole FBX structure. But what I would like to do, and maybe we'll have again a look at what I'm creating with you, is um, our sphere is really soft shaded and that's something I don't necessarily want to do. What I want is more a uh, like spiky thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so you see here that the uh, it's like the single triangles are all um, it, it's it's crystal like it's more crystal like. <laughs> While our sphere constantly is more like a blob. I don't know blob. <laughs> like a <laughs> and an operator where we can um, that allows us to do this is called the facet sub. So on the output of the sphere, right click and create a facet. So it's right clicking on the output of the sphere, facet, 
and it places it in between the sphere and the noise. And it might be, okay, we'll set up the uh, options here first. We'll turn on unique points. And we'll click compute normals as well. And instantly you can see the difference between the two spheres here. So what happens? On the left sphere, if I look at the info, I can see that it has 42 points and 80 primitives. And those primitives are each of these triangles. But if I take 80 triangles and every triangle has three points, then the total number of 42 points doesn't match up. Like it should be something more, it should be more 240 points. But what's actually happening is that where those triangles meet, that's where it's just one point. It shares this one point. All the uh, bordering triangles share this one point. And this is then also used for the normal calculation and the normals, um, they create how the shading is looking, like if it's a smooth shaded thing or if it's this more crystalline shaded thing. So if I look at my facets of where I turned on unique points and then recompute the normals, the unique points now actually shows 240 points, so three points per primitive. And the other thing that we want to do actually now, um, let's increase the frequency of the sphere the frequency parameter is set to 2, and let's put this up to something like 8. And, yeah, well, the other parameters we can adjust later for the noise. Um, and lastly, it still looks a little bit smooth here, too smooth almost. So after the noise sub, right click on the output and add an attribute create. And on the attribute create, turn on the compute normals yet again. Oh, this is a loud computer. Uh, okay. um, and now what we get is really we see those each surface very clearly in the render in the render top.
今あのさっきと比べると各あのサーフェイス表面がよりあの際立った感じになったのがわかります。So、um, everybody got this? Everybody has the same output? ここまででなんか見た目が違うみたいな感じになっている人はいますでしょうか大丈夫でしょうかいや Or if there's any questions. A lot of these operators are there to,、uh, or in general, touch designer is something where you play around with operators. So if you don't know how something works, you just put it, you just plop the operator down and try to figure out what's happening. So, our next step now would be to make this a little bit more pretty. Currently, we have a very、um, uh, well, yeah, simple shading model here. And I would like to just point to something that creates slightly different、uh, look, like a more,、uh, more interesting look, what kind of materials we can use for that. And we recently have added、uh, something called physical based rendering, which allows for much more realistic、um, renderers. No one knows about PBR. <laughs> right, PBR. Well, that's, that's fine because it's not very difficult to、uh, actually do in Touch Designer, and we'll go through this. But the first thing I would like to point you to is this、uh, website here, and the URL is share.substance,、uh, sorry, share.allegorithmic.com. Share, yeah, share.algorithmic.com. And this is a community of,、uh, where you can download shaders, those physical based rendering shaders that are created with a software called Substance Designer. So, here under materials, you have, well, there's lots of materials, and you can choose from different categories as well.、Um, and you can download a file. Well, you have to log in actually, but it, you are then able to download a file that you can use in Touch Designer. And these files, when you download them, they can be read in with a top. And the top is called the substance、uh, top. So let's put down a substance top. Um, I believe there are some, yeah.、Um, there are none, no. They, they are not. But Touch Designer comes with a sample file, and that's what we'll use. I actually thought, oh, wait, let me have a look again because Ben should have PBR. These are all the, simple, the、uh, separate ones. No, it's PBR, it doesn't do substance. Yeah. 
And I don't have my login with me, otherwise we could have downloaded one and you have to register for the, for the website. But it's literally as simple as putting down the substance and then specifying a different file than the default file that's uh, included with Touch Designer. Um, the interesting thing about these files is that they have different, um, in one file, there can be many different materials. And all those different materials can be accessed via this graph parameter here. And it's a little bit of funny display uh, because you get this gridded display. But <clears throat> what it actually is, is it's a, ver a variety of different maps. So it's the color map, the bump map, the specular map. So all the different um, textures that you might need for physical base rendering are in one top. Um, and the one that I would like to look at, oh, what I also want to mention, for each of these materials, you have a different set of values. So you can actually change these materials um, after you loaded them. So you can see by changing the seat here, I picked the wood graph. By changing the seat, I can create different uh, wood types, or I can change the bump map values, etc. Now, um, this might be a, a slight warning. This is not real time. Um, changing those parameters will take your performance right down. So you shouldn't be controlling them while performing or while something is playing. It's more for setup. So what I want to use though now is the checkers graph. So under the graph parameter, select checker. And now we need we need a uh, different material where we can use this um, this substance material on and then assign it to the geo. And we have been mentioning the name quite a bit, so it's the PBR mat. You open up the upgrade dialog and find the mat family and then pick the PBR mat. And the parameters for this PBR map are quite substantial compared to also to the phone map. But if you switch to the maps folder of the maps parameter page, you find the substance top parameter. And that's where we take our substance top 
and drag it on it. And now we can reference this PBR material as the material for the geo component. So select the geo, go to the render page, and just drag the PBR material onto the parameter form material. And a warning flag pops up on the render. This should be true for pretty much all of you. So if you middle mouse click onto the render, or if you don't have a middle mouse button, you can click on the eye. And it tells us about normal mapping, but the SOP being used it doesn't have tangent attributes, and the tangent can be created with an attribute create SOP. Now, luckily, we already created an attribute create SOP earlier when we recalculated the normals after the noise SOP. So I just go to the attribute create and turn compute tangents on. I'm just going to put this into my background by turning on the display flag of the render here so I can see what I'm doing. Um, one thing that I would like to do is the texture, it seems way too big. I've got all these checkers up here and then black down here. And compared to my uh, reference where I want to get to, I want to have way smaller checkers. And one way to control this texture um, or the scale of the texture as well is by using a texture SOP. So I, oh, yeah. So I'm going to move my four SOPs that I currently have to the side and then right click on the output of the attribute create and find a texture SOP. And um, this also isn't really what I want. It's funny, it's like moving strangely around because it's reassigning texture coordinates to my sphere. But I can change this by picking a different texture type. And what I want is I just want to modify my, um, my incoming texture. So I choose under texture type modify source. And now it looks as before, but I have these scale parameters and these offsets, and then I have a whole transform page here. And now it gets a little bit funny. By default, if I turn the scale up, the texture gets smaller. To the opposite, if I go onto the transform page and decrease the scale here, kind of the same thing happens. 
ケールの値を変えていくと、またそれはそれで同じような効果が得られます。But it is slightly different operations. You might have seen that one of them scales from the center, it looks like, and the other one scales more from the left bottom. And it has to do that the one is、uh, more texture coordinates being scaled, while the other one is a more natural transform, as you would expect it in yeah, tops or when you deal with images in general. All right. So,、um, yeah, so which one you use, if you use the scale on the transform page or the scale on the texture, it's up to you. It's just the, the reverse impact of the numbers. Like the one is increasing to scale down, the other one is、uh, the regular decreasing. So, the last thing I want to add,、uh, add here is an environment light so that I can have shading as if there's like sunlight around me or something. The environment light is a Yeah, so we'll go to the upgrade dialog and find the comp family here. And there should be on the first column here. There should be an environment light. So I'll place the environment light, and it's giving me a warning that it actually needs an environment map. And it's kind of lying. It says this node has no effect without an environment map, but everything turned blue. So that's kind of wrong. It does have an effect right now, but we'll fix that. So let's go to the folder that all of you have the workshop 2018 Mutech Japan, and to media, and to HDR. サンプルファイルが入っているフォルダーの中の、えー、とワークショップ2018ミュージックジャパンメディア HDR というフォルダーにあるファイルがあります。And let's drag in the Barcelona rooftop image here into our、uh, touch designer network. で、このフォルダーをドラッグアンドドロップします。Now, you might be getting a little flag depending on the、uh, license that you're using because there's,、uh, it's going to tell you something about resolution、uh, limited. But that's all fine, that's okay. And、um, we can now use this HDR map here and drag it onto the environment map parameter of the environment map light. And now you can see that depending on the deformation of this,、um, of my sphere, that you get these reflections from this、uh, photo. でこれで、えー、と外側の、えー、とインバイロメントマップに指定した画像からの反射光が、えー、と画像に対して、えー、デフェンダリングしているスフィアに対して適用されているのが分かります。ああ、質問がラクしますお、クエスチョン、Yes。あ、お、間違えた。はい。And it's a good time to save Control S. <laughs> And everybody got this running. So, the HDR map is kind of an interesting thing because usually images have,、um, well, a certain limited color information in it. But these HDR maps are very、um, highly detailed images with uh, the. Uh, All the pixel formats, 32 bit, but I think we shouldn't explain that. 
HDR 画像っていうのはあのー、これ CG の背景とかによく使われるんですが、あのー、普通の画像は8ビット振動ってあの画像の色味の解像度大きさの解像度ではなくてそれが8ビットなんですがこれは32ビットの色味の解像度を持っていてよりあの色味のレゾリューションが高い画像になっていますそれを使うことでよりリアリティのある反射光を作ることができます Essentially, yeah, saving much more information per pixel than a normal image that you would get つまりあの一解像度がでかいっていうわけではなくて、1ピクセルあたりに含む情報量が多いということで、よりあの細かい情報量、細かい表現ができる画像になっています。So my next step is to get to the same result as we have here, kind of. Our colors are a little bit off, but we'll change some parameters in the noise to get a similar look. で、次はまああのこのサンプルプログラムの同じような見た目のエフェクトを加えていきます。So let's go to the noise stop. And on the noise page,、um, let's decrease the、uh, amplitude to something like 0.6. And we can change also the period to something smaller. To 0.35 or similar, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be the exact, exact number. You can also choose to do something totally different if you like. This is interesting to exponent up. But. It's kind of Yeah, you can just go free form, whatever you like. Okay, and now we'll switch from this 3D rendering part and have a look at what we can do with a bit of compositing to、um, achieve the same look from the example file here. And did in your intro, did you build a feedback loop or is that totally a new concept? It's new? Maybe? Did they, did they、uh, have it in the、did you, did you build a feedback loop in the previous? So, class? Nope. No. Okay, so we'll do that now. So, feedback loop is something where you take the image and you just composite it over itself and you kind of loop it so you can create trails and things like that. And the first step for that, let's add an overtop to the render top. So, right click on the output and find an overtop. And I'll place it here. And next, let's create a separate chain with a feedback top. And to create a separate chain, I usually middle mouse click on the output, find the feedback, and then I can just place it. So, yeah, it's a nice way of creating more、uh, branches in your network. It's middle mouse clicking and just placing. 
So um, next, let's connect the output of the feedback to the second input of the overtop. And now we have to still do one more thing. We have to tell the feedback top where it's essentially getting its image from, from where, how to close this feedback loop. And this is the target top. So just, just to explain that a little bit, theoretically a feedback loop would be taking the output of the over and control S, save, and putting it into the input of the feedback. This is a feedback loop here, but I'm getting a warning that there is a cook dependency loop, so touch designer doesn't like that. So instead, what I want to do is I want to use this target top parameter and drag the overtop onto it. Um, I, uh, oops, sorry. I drag the overtop onto the target top parameter. Over onto the target top. And this is, this is the same idea as, or it's the legal way, so to say, of creating a feedback loop. And I'll add a null here at the end. After the overtop, I'll add a null. And I'll just have a look here. I'm going to turn off the display flag on the render and turn on the display flag on my null top just to see what this feedback loop is actually doing. So what's happening here is that whatever is being rendered is being drawn over the previous image and therefore it's just, yeah, um, it's just drawing in the background. It's never deleting the background. So for example, let's move this geo component a little bit to the side. So select the geo component and go to the transform page. And then use the value letter and just move the sphere a little bit to the side, like here. Minus 0 0.89. So the value letter is, is extremely useful for this uh, kind of work because you middle mouse click onto a parameter, select the value that you want to increase or decrease the parameter by, and then drag left and right to interactively adjust it. So if you have to try out little values, like you can simply adjust that instead of having to type them in one after the other. The value letter is really a powerful tool for that 
quickly positioning, quickly changing parameters. And you kind of see now how it's just, by me moving this, it just still um, left all the pixels behind. Um, yeah. So the, uh, the feedback loop is a great place to experiment with all kinds of operators. And what I'll do, I'll just, after the feedback here, let's add a display stop. So right click on the output of the feedback and find a display stop. And into the second input of the displays, let's take the output from the render and connect it to the second input of the displays. And now let's change a couple parameters in the displays. So let's set the display weight, the first parameter of the display weight. Let's set that to 0 0.001. And let's set the display weight, the second parameter, just to 0. So what's happening here is the displays is an operator where you move pixels by depending of the second input's pixel value. Uh, does that make sense? <laughs> it's, um, the displays top takes a first image and the second input determines the offset of the pixel. You can create all kinds of effects with it, like uh, wave sound waveforms or, um, yeah, tons. Uh, it's, it's worth playing around, even just connecting a noise to it or something like that. There's uh, lots to discover there. So, um, yeah, this is also a good place to save now. Control S. And as a last step in this one here, if everybody has that, or second last step actually, let's add a little bit of a rotation and a little bit of Python to this whole geometry. So to rotate this continuously, we'll go to the Geo1 component and uh, go to the transform page of the parameters. And then let's take, uh, click on the rotate on the name to expand these three parameters. And what we now can do here very easily is type in a little expression. And this expression might be familiar from the noise top earlier, how we animated the noise top. And it is apps time dot frame. And it's a little bit fast for my taste, so I gotta make it nice and slow. Zero point one. So time zero point one. And I'll just copy this expression here and also paste it into the RY parameter. Uh, 
All right. Yeah. Random rotation? Or so in the in, uh, you would want a random in there? Yeah. Um, you could. Or something. Yeah, so um, um, it might be worthwhile um, checking out, like you, couldn't, you could use all the Python libraries right. for this. Or we also have a couple helper functions which make this easier because importing a module and stuff like that, like random. Um, so there is a help. Uh, all of the parameters have this regular wiki help, but they also have a Python help. And that gets you to the wiki. And here, if you look for random, I think it should come up. Let's see. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, no, there's too much random here. Find the TDU module. TDU module. And the TDU module actually has a lot of helper functions. So there's a rand there, a random uh, little function. So you could type into the rotate parameter, you could type into it tdu.rand, open parentheses, and close parentheses after the uh, expression there, because it's a seat, essentially. And now I get a random number between 0 and 1. So I could type times, I don't know, 180. That's pretty random. So you also have, though, um, access to things like sign functions or something. Math.sign. Those kind of things. Um, there's th just this note on the side. Um, a lot of these things are sometimes easier to do in shops. So you just build it in shops and export on it. Or sometimes it's quicker to just type it in. So depends on how you're working. Another thing that um, is worth exploring in this is the camera itself. The camera has a position, but it also has this view page, which lets me control the field of view, for example, here. I can have an orthographic camera, so everything is flat, essentially. I can, oh, sorry. You can also switch or use this perspective to ortho. So you can actually blend between those two camera models, between a perspective model, which is the, uh, the how we see the world, essentially, and the orthographic, which is the um, flat rendered. <laughs> Uh, 
And um, when we are in perspective mode here, um, we cannot only just the field of view, but we can also, for example, control focal length and aperture separately. So you can create a little bit drama in your camera essentially by adjusting those parameters to something like Okay, so this is pretty good. Um, now, before we, when we got started, what we created, and I just go outside here, what we created was a container comp. And it would be nice if now I could see, uh, oh right, I didn't rename this, sorry. Because I crashed, it's very nice. And no tool, no tool. Um, and it would be nice if I could see what I created as the background of this container here. So let's try that out. The first step what I would do now is add an out top. So let's after the null one inside of your network, let's right click there and find an out top. And this out top, sorry, yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, over, um, yeah, t so to create, t to uh, see this image that we created here on the outside, usually what I do is I'll first create an out top actually. <laughs> And these out tops or all these out operators, what they essentially do is they add this out onto a component. So zoom out like I just did to get one level up and so that you see the, uh, and this is, so because I skipped this step after I crashed here, you have to do something. For you, it looks like this. And what we have to do is essentially, yes, on this container that we created, go onto the look page and in the background top parameter, type in dot slash out one. さっきさっき最初から表示されてたのはちょっとクラッシュしちゃったからであって本当はここにループのパラメータでクラウドトップっていうのにドットスラッシュアウトワンドットスラッシュは一個中の階層ですねのさっき作ったアウトワンを指定
And now we kind of, we should see the same thing here. You should see actually in project one, you should see this container or this image also being rendered. Is that correct? And I think just in the last lesson, or let's just check if everybody actually sees that. Everybody sees the image? So from this point, we can just use this as a, um, you can output it onto a window component with the window component as you did in the last class. Um, you could make it a full screen thing. Um, So it might be a good practice. I'm just going to select the perform component here and drag my 
sphere noise onto the window operator. For you, it would be project one. I'm sorry, it's again the little confusion with my crash. And now, um, yeah, if I open up, if I open this as a separate window here, I see that it's a little bit small, but we can fix that by changing the uh, um, opening size from automatic from comp top to fill. And we can turn off the borders. And now if I hit open as a separate window, I get my full output. And I'm sure as you remember, there was this difference between open as separate window and open as a perform window. If you don't need your network or um, if it's the final result that you want to output, it is much more practical for performance or uh, much better for performance to use the open as perform window. The open as separate window and open as perform window are just any questions? As we have successfully created uh, what we set out to do. Yeah. Um, essentially, uh, as in as in this, or without any of the uh, like like this as the background, or. Yeah. Oh, so you want to? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Abs like you could composite it uh, with something else. Yeah. Um, uh, I struggle to find an example right now, but uh, you have all the possibilities of compositing this over other um, animations that you might have, or movies, or yeah. Does that answer the question, or not quite? <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, since this is just a texture, essentially, um, you can you can do with this um, anything you like. Um, and you're going to do this tomorrow. You're going to do an audio visualization tomorrow in the program, I think. But um, just to... Uh, there is a little one in the palette, I think. Under tools, there's an XY scope. Uh, sorry, no, it's under techniques. There's an XY scope, which is essentially a, a little audio visualization. So those can be uh, um, added with each other or, yeah. But I'm sure this is not quite the question you had. <laughs> but I'll, um, I'll, 
maybe we can talk after and I'll get that question right. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I think if you, please ask me if, um, other questions. <laughs> we have, yes. ですね。え、この、え、例えば実際使うのはこの3つなんですけど、入り口が別に必要なので、ここに例えばヌルって作ってあげて、インがあってここまでがフィードバックの4つになるので、この4つをくくります。で、名もないところで、えっと、これですね。なんか、クラップセレクトっていうのやると、あの、1個にまとまります。で、これこの中の階層に今入ったやつが、で、勝手にさっと自由めと言って一緒でインとアウトがくっつけられていて、で、あの
ちょっちゃってまとめちゃったんだってなることが結構あるので、ぬるとかから始めて、ぬるとかで終わって、ちゃんとあのこれだけで完結してるなっていうのがなった上でまとめるとかっていうのをよくやってますね。なので、まとめた中でぬるはいらないので、後で取っちゃってもいいですし、ね、まあ、そういうなんか一つのテクニックですね。それはですね、プリファレンスでかデフォルトだとあの勝手に保存すあのナンバーがどんどん増えていく設定になっているんですが、えー、とプリファレンスのセーブの話があってでバックアップホルダーっていうのを作ってそっちにどんどん保存されていくっていうやり方もしくはもうナンバリングするファイルは作るなっていう選択が。できます。Where is the increments for the save folder? That's yeah, that's this one. Ah, on and copy. Ah, そうですね。このプリファレンスの一番上が今 on and copy to backup folder になっていればこれ backup folder になっていて、on だけだと同じ階層にダーッとセーブするたび作られて、でオフにしとけばあの backup ファイルを全く作らないっていう。最終的に書き出すのに一番簡単なのはムービーファイルアウトっていうものがあります。でこれを出力したいものにつないでここにあの。形式を選ぶところがあるので、まあ、MP4 とか H26 とか選んで、でコードってやればあの書き出しできます、えー。なんか単純にこれだけだと押してから止まるまでレコーディングになっちゃうんですけど、もうちょっとうまくシーケンスを持っているようなものを、そのシーケンスを定義してあげて、ヒットをしたらその定義したシーケンスの数だけ録画するようにとか、そういうこともやろうと思えばできます。One thing that we couldn't show quite well now because we just have one、uh, projector、um, thing set up, yeah, is if you want to output this on a second screen but have the network on the first screen so that you can use the network as you always want to, but on the second screen you would have the final output. And you can do this in the window component by picking a different monitor. Depending on how many you have connected. So、uh, you could select here monitor one, for example, and then you would say open a separate window. And what the open a separate window does, it, it keeps the network open at all times and just renders into a second screen. So you can interact with it then. Yeah. The whole thing is that the monitor is not going to be able to do it. 複製してるでできないんですけど、実際なんかプロジェクターで映像を投影するときとかって、ファイナルアウトプットはプロジェクターから出てるんだけど、それを見ながらこっちでネットワークをいじりたいっていうことはたくさんあると思います。でそれはあの最後に調整したあのウィンドウのコンポーネントでモニターを指定してあげれば、モニターそのつないである番号の順番にあの2番にだけフル画面で出せとかそういうことができるので。Yeah, that's basically the idea. Well, it's almost five, so I think we can wrap it if there's no other questions, but we'll be around here, so ask us what you want, anything. Ask us anything. <laughs> And thank you very much. So, if you want to ask me, I'll be here.